also before I started that, I want to encourage you that every time the enemy attacks you, every time the enemy come against you, it's an opportunity for you to grow in God. Amen. A lot of times we, we consider the attacks of the enemy um, nerve-wrecking. We, we complain a lot about the attacks of the enemy and the temptations that he set before us. But every time you're tempted of the enemy, it's an opportunity for you to grow, Amen. to conquer, to, to, to gain more power over. So when you look at it from a different perspective, when the enemy attacks me, it's an opportunity for me to gain a foothold over the enemy. Amen. Amen. Um, he, he come to destroy us, yes. But if I can win the battle, uh, I can put him under my feet. Yeah. Don't have to fight that fight again. Amen. Amen. And every time God tests you, it's the time to get closer to God through grace. God tests the devil tempts. Amen. And just keep that in your head. Sometimes I think we get lost. The devil, the devil's attacking me. The devil's coming against me. Oh, woe is me. No, it's a time to grow. It's an opportunity to win. It's an opportunity to, to grow in the spirit. Amen. Matthew chapter 4, you remember Jesus was led of the spirit. And to be tempted of the, the devil. Amen. And when he came from that temptation, he had all power. Yes. Amen. I'll leave y'all alone on that one. Amen. Grab your Bibles and turn with me to the book of Revelation, chapter number three. Revelations chapter number three. I guess I lost my reader today. Praise the Lord. <laughs> you got me, Pastor Tiffany? Can you read the NIV version, Pastor Rod? I'm going to go NIV today. Praise the Lord. Try to have a little fun today, praise the Lord. But nevertheless, we do what the Lord say. Pastor Tiffany, if you will read verses 1 through 6. John. And unto the angel of the church in Sardis write, These things saith he that hath the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. I know thy works, that thou hast a name, that thou livest and art dead. Be watchful and strengthen the things which remain that are ready to die, for I have not found thy works perfect before God. Remember therefore how thou hast received and heard, and hold fast and repent. If therefore thou shalt not watch, I will come on thee as a thief, and thou shalt not know what hour I will come upon thee. Verse 6. Thou hast a few names even in Sardis which have not defiled their garments. And they shall walk with me in white, for they are worthy. He that, that overcometh, the same shall be clothed in white raiment. And I will not blot out his name out of the book of life. But I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the living God. Amen. I want to talk to you for a few minutes about... Dead man walking. I want to just dive into this just for a little bit and and talk to you from the topic. Dead man walking. It would be weird to see a man with no life walk. It would be kind of strange. It would it would look kind of awkward, but. The reality is, in the Christian faith, there are a lot of dead men walking. Amen. Come on now. And when you look at the church of Sardis, the, you notice Jesus does not do what he does with Ephesus. He does not point out the good. He does not uh, speak to the great things that they were doing. Uh, he, he deals and he gets straight to the point. He says, you look alive, but you're dead. And, and, and which, which simplifies is. The, the, the situation is there was a lot of things going on in Sardis. There was, it seems to be a lot of people that were alive, Brother Greg. But the judgment was, Pastor Rod, that Jesus simply said, you are dead. It, it seems as though when you read the text, the Lord was a little frustrated. He, he didn't praise them about anything they did good. He, 
He didn't say anything about their greatness, about how they served and how they how they, how they followed God and how they how they how, how they love one another. He didn't he didn't speak to any of those things. The only thing he spoke to was, "You look alive, but you are dead." And I will get into pondering my head, Pastor Tiffany, what did the church look like? What did Sardis look like? What was really going on in this church? And I can begin to imagine that when the Lord said, you look alive, I can begin to think about the lively praise and worship that they had. I can imagine that they praised like no other church. I can, I can imagine that they lifted up their voices and they worshiped like no other church. I can imagine that they came to church on time. They, they showed up early. They was in Bible study an hour before it started. They looked on fire for God. They was excited, Brother Greg. Time to pay their tithe. The line went all the way down to the food line. They was excited about everything going on in the church. They was excited about every phone call, Pastor Rod. Every assignment that they had, they had a smile on their face. Uh, they, they, they seemed to walk in power. They seemed to talk with power. But, but Jesus says, you are dead. And I'm wondering, Pastor Rod, is, how can I look alive but but yet I look dead to Christ. What, what am I doing to, to be alive and appear to be alive before the people? That when Jesus looks at me, he says, you appear to be alive, but yet I see you as dead. Not dying, but dead. I, 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 was, I would have been okay if he would have said you were dying, but he didn't say you were dying, Brother Greg. He, he said you were dead. And when a person is pronounced dead, they're dead. They, it's over. The game over. No, no, more, no more life in you. You're dead. There's nothing happening within you when the doctor says you're dead. There's, there's nothing to do. They put, a, they put a sheet over the top of you. And for Jesus to say you are dead, that means that everything I'm appearing to be doing is fake. Uh -huh. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. I look good, I smell good, I, I dress good, I, I look okay, I play good, and everything appears to be okay. But there's something on the inside of me that's dead, dead, dead. And can you imagine going to this church? Can you imagine the reputation of this church? The whole city was like, it's a great church. Every Sunday they shout. Every Sunday they praise. You can hear them on Wednesday worshiping. But Jesus said, you are dead. Church growing, people coming to the church, but, but yet the church is dead. Praying for four hours, but still dead. Fasting, but still dead. Winning souls to Christ, but still dead. There's something wrong with a church that can look alive, but yet Jesus said they are dead. A great reputation, but still dead. Can't nobody see the deadness but Christ. You've you seen those type of people. Every day they on fire for God. Every day they running for Jesus. Every day they hold it on. Tie not and hold on. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. But in the secret place, when nobody else can see them, Come on. Come on. <laughs> when all the saints are gone home, uh -huh. <laughs> when the pastors turn their back, uh, uh -huh. when the praise team one leader had turned the lights out, uh, when the husband had went to bed, uh, when the wife had went to bed, when the children had gone to sleep, when they get by themselves, when nobody else can see, Pastor Rob, uh, they dead men and dead women. I wonder what activities they participate in. How can you worship but yet be dead? Uh, how can you read a whole chapter? And still be dead. How, how can you turn to Hebrews 11 and 1 and say, Now faith is, and something is a thing hoped for, and the evidence of things are not seen. 
and still be dead. What's going on in the life of a believer in this church here? There's something going on behind the scenes, Brother Greg. There, 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 there's, there, there's an issue that had not been dealt with. Your reputation is great. You pray great. You fast great. But what's going on in your dead body? The Lord says to the church of Sardis, he says, everybody else think you got it going on, but, but let me just deal with it right now. You are dead. Man, I, I was studying this and began to wonder. I couldn't even put one plus one together because I couldn't understand how you can be look alive at one minute but look dead to Christ. I, I couldn't merge the two. Uh, I'm struggling in my study because I, I couldn't understand how can you be alive but yet you're dead. I couldn't put the two together, Pastor Rod, because either you're dead or either you're alive. Uh, either you're not in Christ or either you're in Christ. How can you be in Christ dead? I, I was confused. So, in my confusion, I always need an example. <laughs> I said, Lord, how can they be alive, but yet you point the finger at them and say, you are dead. How can they have a great reputation, God, but you're still saying they're dead? Uh, he began to point to me. He began to say, hey, because... One of the reasons, perhaps, is they've been playing church so long. Uh, you can play church, and you can do church, and you can be a church member, and you can look like a preacher, and you can sound like a preacher, you can be a teacher of the gospel, and, and you can look the part. But the greatest thief among you is them who don't look like a thief. When a guy come to your house and he got a mask on, you, you identify him as a thief. You can get ready for him. Come on, come on. But if you come in a three-piece suit with a briefcase, $500 shoes, Rolex watch, beards in the driveway, and call himself a prophet, you say he's a prophet. Because on the outward part, Everything looks okay. Everything looks fine. The problem is, you need some designers in the house. You, you need somebody to say, uh, I see something that don't look right. Uh, they look dressed up, but something is a little bit off. The problem with Sardis is, there were no designers in the house. So everything that appeared to be worshiping was worshiping. Everything that was shouting to everybody, they all shout, 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 brother, shout. But there was no designing in the house. <laughs> and when there's designing in the house, Jesus can say, that man is dead. He looks good. He smells good, but he's Dead. He, he's dead. He's all the way dead. Second problem with this church. Nobody wanted to self-examine themselves. You, you still shouting over last year's testimony. You, you still shouting because they say you preached a good sermon 10 years ago. You 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 think you still got it on you, Pastor Rod? You still they still carry the excitement of yesterday <laughs> when they first got ordained by God. They still judging themselves by when they first God first used them. 
When they first laid hand on the sick and the sick got up, they, they still judging themselves by those standards. And they forget, and sometimes we forget that we serve a right now God. Uh, God knows about yesterday, yes. He understands what's coming tomorrow, yes. But he's judging my heart today. I don't care how many demons you cast out yesterday. Can you live all right today? I don't care how long you spoke in tongues on yesterday. Can you do right today? Can you forgive today? Can you live holy today, right now, in this minute? The problem with the church of Sardis, they was living on their reputation. And every time you live on your reputation, you have the possibility to become a dead man walking. Don't build your relationship up with God based on what you did yesterday. One of the next things perhaps happened to the church is they got too busy to check in with God. You know, you get busy sometimes in life. And life is a busy thing. And it's a real thing. But woe to a man who don't check in with his maker. Woe to that man, Pastor Rod, who, who forget the very person who gave them the ability to do what it is that they're doing. In the church of Sardis, they, they have got to a point where they became routine. And one of the things you never want to get in your walk with Christ is routine. That's right. That's right. Hey, routine forces you to get comfortable. And sometimes you will get too comfortable. And if you get too comfortable with God, you don't know when he moves. He might just step out of the way, Brother Greg, and bump your head. You can't get so comfortable in your routine with God that you forget who God really is in your life. And in the church of Sardis, we begin to see that they begin to place the church before God, the wife before God, the husband before God, the gift before God. Nothing comes before God. Nobody comes before the maker. The Bible says, he says of himself, I am a jealous God. And what happens to a church that has a great reputation but is dead, they get to a place where they forget who God is. Just going through the motions of prayer. Going through the motions of faith. Just doing it because you told you had to do it. And eventually you get to a place where you become dead. Sometimes we look at believers and we know everything looks right. And I think it's time for us as believers to learn CPR. We got to get to a place, Pastor Rob, where you can look at me and say, you look good and you sound good, but I sense something in the spirit. I sense something in the spirit is a little bit off. I don't know what it is, Brother Greg, but there's something that's a little bit off. And God reveals these things to them who he has a relationship with. And what should have happened in the church of Sardis is a man of God or a woman of God should have been able to say, something is wrong here. I love you, but the message was good, but something is still off. Something is not ticking. And what we should be able to do as brothers and sisters in Christ is say, hey, I know CPR. I've been to the class. Uh, God hasn't revealed to me what it is, but it is something there. And because I spent time with God, I have the power with you to break it. But what we do, Pastor, 
We're getting our little clicks. He said, you see that, Pastor Jay? Got a one brown shoe and one black shoe. Nobody, nobody even told him. Something wrong with that boy. Something's going on in his head. God reveals to you, and you have the power of CPR, but yet you won't help me. Maybe I went colorblind for a minute. Maybe that's a deficiency in me. Maybe I'm under so much pressure. I didn't pray long enough. And God reveals something to you, and you have the audacity to gossip instead of CPR. Bro, I know something's off. I, I don't need to know what it is, but I, I've been praying three days. Let's connect for I can help you. The church of Sardis, they just let them keep doing what they were doing. They didn't care. All they cared about as long as when it's daytime to perform, everybody clap when they clap. Uh-huh. Come on, come on. When it's daytime to take the mic, everybody was doing it. My time to sing my lead song. Everybody stand and praise. And their team member right next to them dying. And they got the power in their hand. Something is wrong with you. You are dead man walking. You can see somebody struggling and God reveals to you something's going on. Instead of you yielding yourself to prayer. You want to talk about it. We got to learn as believers to perform CPR on each other. Sometimes you just got to look. Sometimes you just do it in the spirit. God, something wrong. I don't know what's wrong, but I'm going to lay my plate down for sister today. I don't know what's going on in her life, but I'm turning my plate down today. I'm here to fight for my brother. I'm here to fight for my sister. It's no iron team. We either all win or we all lose. We have to get to a place, Pastor Ron, where I don't care what's going on and what it looks like. We are on the same team. And if I allow you to die, I'll die with you. It's time out for the big eyes. And what was happening in Sardis, they had these big eyes. The bishop didn't want to hang out with nobody. Come on. The pastors wanted to do their own thing. Oh the prophets, prophets only wanted to prophesy when it was positive. The teachers only wanted to teach when the house was packed. Come on, come the singers on. only wanted to sing when people were praised and they worshiping. You got to learn how to sing when people are dead. Right. There ain't no power in you to bring them alive. Oh. Yeah. The word, the word. God. Amen. You can't lead your brother on the battlefield. If he die, you die. You, I can't leave Pastor Rod on the battlefield. If he die, I die. If he die, there's no relief on third Sunday. <laughs> Y'all laughing. If you knew how much time you had to put in to pray, preach every Sunday. No, I can't afford for him to die. Come on, come on, come on. Come tomorrow, he's on my fast list. Yeah, yeah. Yes, sir. At the top of the list. Use him, God. If there be any deficiencies in his life, get rid of it now, God. We have a tendency to leave our brothers and sisters on the sideline, and we forget that when they die, you die. Because as soon as I die, Sister Renata, somebody got to pick up my responsibilities. That's right. That's right. That's right. <laughs> They may be calling you Sunday to preach. Uh, Pastor James can't preach no more this month. Uh, something happened to him. I don't know. Can you feel in? Well, I would, but I was talking about him like a dog yesterday. I can't. I don't know. God may strike me dead as soon as I take the pulpit. And he should. Come on, come on, come on. 
You let me die and you got the power to help? He should punish you. And me too. If I let you die. You got to get to a place where you understand that I, 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 I may feel like dying. The, 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 the challenge and the fight may be too much. But I got to keep on living for my brother's sake. I can't let the enemy take me out because my brother's sake. We're going to stand side arm to arm to fight this battle. None of us can afford to die. None of us can afford to be dead. You ever tried to carry a dead man? We do these trainings in the military. No man left on the battlefield. That's right, that's right. They'll come up and tap you, you dead. And you just fall out. Mm -hmm. Lord, have mercy. We gotta walk two miles with this boy. 250 pounds. Yeah, yeah. We rucked up. Still got our weapons. But leave him if you want to. <laughs> leave him if you want to. Everybody gonna die. And guess what we did? Hey man, you carry this. I'm gonna carry it for about 10 steps. Boy, I can't carry him no more, man. You need to lose the weight. Lay him down. <laughs> Next man, pick him up. I got him. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Wow. Lay him down. The next man, pick him up. I got him. Let's go. Until he's resuscitated on his own. Can't just sit by and let people die. We can't carry the weight of the dead man. The judgment on the church was, you look alive, but you are dead. One of the things you have to understand when you're dead is you must come to the real, re realization that I'm dying. Amen. You understand when you're dying, even if you never died a real death, if blood is gushing out of your body, there's going to come a point that you're going to recognize that I, I'm about to die. And what happens, you have to come to your own realization that I'm dying. As soon as I come to my own realization that I'm dying, then there will be no dead weight for you to carry. Because as soon as I understand, Pastor Rod, that I'm dying, I should reach out. Some people are dead because they're too proud. Come on. <laughs> And sometimes I understand this, you know, you you had bad problems and you had things happen and you told people in your business got in the street, I, I, can, I can get it. But what I can't get and what I won't let, let you pass on is when you're dying, there is somebody to call. That's right, that's right. That's right. <laughs> that there is somebody to call when you die. If you go in your prayer closet long enough, Get on your knees long enough and start calling to the king of glory. CPR. He'll give you CPR. First thing he'll tell you is pray. Second thing he'll tell you is read. Third thing he'll tell you is fast a little bit. And if that don't work, go get a brother. Two, one can chase a thousand, two can chase ten thousand. And if you run up against eleven thousand, go get a third one. There's always help for the dying. The question is, will you reach out? Yeah, we ready to close here. The church of Sardis came to a place where they turned and began to think like my man in Judges chapter 16. There was a man by the name of Samson, one of my favorite characters in the Bible. This is when you know you're about to die. Samson was a bad man. Uh, uh, excuse my French, he was, he was a bad man. He was, a, he, he was one of those guys that, he was a first round draft pick. He, he's one of those guys, Pastor Ryan, like, look, you can line up everybody you want to line up. Samson, David, Gideon. I got to choose Samson. David, I love you, Gideon, I love you, but it's something different about this Samson dude. 
This dude had came to a place where he had so much power. And God used him so much that he began to play games with his anointing. And this is when you know you're, you're sliding into a place called death. He began to decide that he was going to use his anointing when he wanted to. How he wanted to. When he wanted to. And sometimes when God calls you, he calls you for a reason. He calls you to lift the burden off somebody else. He calls you to help the church, not hinder the church. He gave you the anointing for a reason to serve with power. And Samson came to a place where he began to play with Delilah. Begin to play games with Delilah. And for the better, like a better word, he began to, Delilah said, Samson, what's your script? Samson began to give a little riddles. Well, you know, I ain't never wore shoes. Lack of a better word, you know the story. And then all of a sudden, she would bind Samson and the Philistines would come and she'll say, Samson, the Philistines are upon you. He'll break loose. But Samson didn't realize he was dying. He had gotten to a place where he began, number one, to disrespect the anointing of God. Disrespect the very thing God called him to do. God gifted this boy to destroy and judge the Philistine. That was his whole call, his whole purpose. The whole reason the anointing was on his life was to judge the Philistine. Number one, he began to disrespect the anointing. Begins to play games with the anointing. As though he had control. This is why you can't live on your reputation. You need a new encounter with God daily. That's right, that's right. Don't talk about what God did yesterday. What did God do in your life today? That's right, that's right. What prayer did he answer today? What deliverance did he bring today? What change did he bring in your life today? Not yesterday. Yesterday, you began to rely on yesterday, Paul. And Samson began to backslide to a place called death. Begin to play these games with Delilah. And one day, he told Delilah the full truth. As he understood it. He said, a razor has never come to my head. My hair has never been cut. He believed that his power was in his hair. But when you read the story, when she shaved Samson's head, and she said, Samson, the Philistines be upon you. He tried to do what he did yesterday. He tried to do what he did last year. He tried to cast that devil out the same way he did three years ago. And it didn't work. And the Bible says something real powerful. The Bible says, he wished not that the anointing was gone. He didn't even know that the anointing had left the building. He had walked to a place, Brother Steve, and he, he had bowed down for God so much that God left and he didn't even know it. Now he's a dead man trying to shake loose his bonds. The very power he used to have don't work no more. Going to God the same way he always went. No answer from heaven. You dying. When you can't touch God, you're dying. The Bible says he, he was not that the anointing was gone. Left the building. All power has, has, has got away from him. And he found himself bound in chain by the very thing he called, he was called to kill. He was called to kill the Philistines in great numbers, but now he's bound by the thing he called to kill. And if you're not careful and you get to this dead place, the very thing you call to conquer will conquer you. And you'll find yourself in a place called dead man. And what we have to begin to understand, we have to begin to recognize 
when we are going backwards. You, you know how God works in your life. Some of you can't pray 10 minutes. It don't work for you. It's literally a waste of time. Some of us can pray 10 minutes, read two hours, and got the same power. You know how long it takes you with God? Stay in your place. That's right. And if you're not in your place, the devil's backing you up. He's driving you to a place called dead man. You got to fight your way out. You got to fight. The good thing about Samson as I close is he came to a place where he realized his mistake. And what we do is what the church of Sardis did not do. There was only a few people, Pastor Rob, right. that was clean in the whole church. Uh -huh. You read the story, y'all you, you, you read it when you get home. There was only a few folk. That's right, that's right. Pastor, there was only a few that walked in white robes with Christ. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Just a few. Everybody else had went to a dead place. But yet they were still having church. The reason, one of the reasons we have an open altar is that when you come into church and you know you can't feel God or find God or you're out of place with God, you can come to the altar. That's right, that's right, that's right. That's right. That's right. Without nobody calling you and saying, Oh God of Zion, hear my Lord, touch me again. It's your responsibility not to die. Right. If you're wounded, you got to let somebody know. Yeah. We don't see everything. If you bleed, let somebody know. That's right. At least let God know. Yeah. Your heart hurts. Your heart's in trouble. At least tell God. None of us should die. Yes. Samson came to a place where he said, <laughs> as I close, he, he poked his eyes out. A man with that kind of strength, a man that can grab foxes and hold them by the tail and set them on fire <laughs> and burn the whole week. All the men, that was a bad guy. Now he can't even break out of handcuffs. They poked his eyes out. Made fun of him. Laughed at him. But thank God Samson had enough sense. The Bible says he, he tell one of the lads, he said, hey, can you take me to the center posts of the building? And the lad takes him to the center posts of the building. Samson, I can imagine Samson laying up on the center post. And what I love about Samson, he began to call on God. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Ooh, he began to call on God. I, I can imagine how that prayer went, Brother Charles. Lord, I, I messed up. Uh -huh. Lord, woe is me, a man of unclean lips. How about you talk for the Lord of God, I, I messed everything up. I messed up your whole plan. And I'm not even worthy to call on your name. But here, my God. Here, my own God. If you would just anoint me again, fear me again, I'll never come back to this dead place ever again. And God heard him, and he sent grace. The Bible says when grace hit Samson, that what he, which he used to have, he had again. That's right, 
That's right. That's right. The Bible didn't begin to push on the pillars. God Almighty. And he pushed them, brothers. And he pushed them so much they fell down. And the Bible says at that time, he killed more Philistines than ever before. It's time for a second reign for somebody standing in the church. Hey, Boko Show today, can I? It's time for a second reign for somebody in here today. Hey, Boko City. God restore the people. Shaba shoko to kuroba. Restore them, God. Shepe karabo so. Restore the dead men, the dead women. Shaba shoto kuroba basai. Restore them with great power. God, I declare a second reign in their life. Shede lebo. Sheke tebo shete. Hala lebo she. If you need a second rain from God, come to the altar today. If you know I need a second rain from God, come to the altar today.